Hi everybody, my name is Zach Marshall and I'm a senior scientist working in the physics division at the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. So a senior scientist at a national lab is a little bit like a professor at a university. We do a lot of our own research and we work with graduate students, but we don't usually teach undergraduate courses. That makes us a little different. Uh, the DOE has a bunch of national labs around the country. Ours is the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, which is right next to UC Berkeley. We get to work with people on the campus a lot. I myself am a particle physicist working on the ATLAS experiment, which is a part of the Large Hadron Collider. The Large Hadron Collider is 17 miles around. It's the biggest machine ever built, and it sits just outside of Geneva, Switzerland and it collides particles at almost the speed of light at the center of our detector. Our detector is called Atlas, uh, and you can think of it like a big camera that can take 40 million pictures a second. And the collider gives us almost 2 billion collisions every second. So you can imagine a lot of our work is sifting through those pictures and trying to see if there was something interesting in one, maybe something that we didn't understand. Uh, you might have heard of us a couple of years ago when we announced the discovery of the Higgs boson, which we saw in those pictures that are sort of remnants of those collisions. So that was one of the great discoveries at the LHC. Uh, I got started in this sort of path towards Atlas a long time ago, uh, probably in second, third grade. I was pretty good at math and that was exciting for me, but math was never really the end. It wasn't the interesting thing itself. Math was interesting as a tool to solve interesting problems. Uh, and later on, once I got to junior high and high school, I got interested in computers and writing software. Um, but again, it wasn't because that was the end. It was because that was an interesting tool to use to solve hard problems. And that's what really got me excited. Um, and I started getting introduced to some interesting hard problems by a friend of mine in sixth or seventh grade who read a book called The Physics of Star Trek. He was a little bit of a, tre a Trekkie, and he started explaining to me what was in the book, and it talked about wormholes and black holes and transporters and all kinds of things that aren't part of our everyday world, um, but that people are thinking about and wondering about, and those sounded like really interesting problems to me, uh, really interesting things to work on. So I started thinking around then that I maybe wanted to be a physicist. And when I went to UC Berkeley as an undergraduate, I decided that's what I wanted to major in, physics. So I worked over the four years at, at UC Berkeley with a few different professors on different research projects and got to see how experimental physics sort of works. Uh, and when I was at the end of my undergrad time, I got to look around a little bit and talk to some of my professors about what the next interesting project and, and really hard problem was going to be. And at that time, the Large Hadron Collider was just about to start up. So I decided that was the project that I wanted to be a part of. That was the way to answer some of those really interesting questions. Uh, so I went to Caltech as a graduate student and got to start working on the Large Hadron Collider. I've been working on that ever since. Uh, so the Large Hadron Collider has really interesting hard problems and it, it keeps me excited about, about getting up in the morning. That's one of the things that I really like about our job is getting to tackle those hard problems. And as a particle physicist, I'm really trying to understand how the universe works at a really basic level. So we do fundamental science and discovery science. That means I can't immediately tell you uh, what you can sell the Higgs boson for or what technology you can use the Higgs boson in. But I can tell you that probably about 100 years from now, somebody's going to figure something out that needs the Higgs boson and that that will make uh, people better. It's been true for hundreds of years. Every breakthrough in fundamental science has always led to a great advancement in humanity. Uh, whether it was the discovery of electricity or quantum mechanics and special relativity, these things sounded kind of esoteric at the time and we didn't really know what they would be useful for. Uh, but we, we eventually figured it out and built them into our technology and our society today wouldn't be the way it is without those those great breakthroughs. So those are the fundamental things that we're working on that will fuel technology 100 years from now. So the DOE is really 
wonderful uh, at setting groups of people together to solve these big problems. And that's part of the National Lab's mission, solving these big scientific problems. Um, Atlas, my experiment, will run through 2035. So we have a long path of, of interesting problems to get after. And we're already starting to talk about the next collider that we might build after that in 2040 or 2045. Um, there are a lot of other interesting experiments going on at the same time, especially in cosmology. You might have heard a couple years ago about the discovery of gravitational waves, which we're now already using as a tool to understand the universe. And there are a lot of cool experiments to do with dark matter and dark energy, which are two huge components of our universe that are really important to how the universe came to be the way it is that we don't really have a very good understanding of. So a lot of people are working on trying to understand them a little better. Um, and those are the kinds of things that, that we get to tackle at, at National Labs. So I, I think studying STEM is fantastic. Um, our job as scientists is a great job. The good days are pretty good. The bad days aren't very bad. Um, and it's a really great training to be a scientific citizen, even if you don't end up as a scientist. So we train people as a part of uh, the work to be pretty fearless when they attack new problems, uh, to be able to deal with uncertainties and data that you're looking at or uncertainties in, in the problems and to just work your way right past them, to break down big problems into little pieces and to try and solve each of them, to look at data and say, do the data match what I expected them to match? If not, was my expectation, was my intuition wrong? Or the data answering a different question from what I thought they were going to answer? Um, so I think it's really wonderful training um, for all all future jobs and, and for just being a good citizen, for watching the news at night and saying, you know, does this make sense? If not, is my intuition wrong? Uh, or is, is this news story answering a different question than what I thought it was answering? Uh, so that's another thing that, that I really like about our job is a lot of what we do is training students and postdocs to be good scientists and to think scientifically. Uh, and I hope that they carry that into the other parts of their lives. Um, when I'm not working on particle physics, physics um, these days, while we're all stuck at home, I try and get a little exercise in and watch some movies. Uh, I like going to movies <laughs> when I'm allowed to. Uh, the other thing that I really like to do is travel, see new parts of the world and get to sort of experience new cultures. And that's a part of the job that I didn't expect uh, but turns out to be uh, interesting and important. There are workshops and uh, collaboration meetings and conferences all around the world, and we work with people from all around the world. Uh, and we frequently have to go meet with people and talk to them about their work and explain our work to them and try and figure out, um, you know, interesting, interesting ways that we can work together. Uh, so I've gotten as a part of my work to go all around the US and Europe and into Asia and Australia uh, to talk to people about my work and understand their work better. And while you're there, you of course get to experience a new culture and see how they live and, and see what it's like. Uh, so I, I really enjoy that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have questions, uh, you can tweet at our experiment, which is at Atlas Experiment. You can tweet at the LBNL Physics Division at LBNL Physics, and you can get me at ZL Marshall. So I hope you enjoyed the video and have a good day.